Buddy, this is Tyler Preston 20. I'm here with Wild Mouth Reviews and I guess other people later on to yes. discuss about Kaiju, Godzilla, and I guess whatever's on our mind. So what's up? Yeah, I'm pretty good. Uh, whereas you're everybody's favorite black friend, I like to be everybody's favorite white friend. Okay, <laughs> of course. Of course. Like, I guess to start this whole entire conversation about Kaiju and Godzilla, and like, we'll talk. We'll talk here, with, with, and I brought as a guest star Godzilla himself. <laughs> of course. But, um, Godzilla, okay. We'll be she ronking this entire stream. Of course, but when were you first introduced to Godzilla? When I was like four. Oh, really? Like, what was your what? first Godzilla movie? TNT, TNT, TNT is Monster Vision. I think it was Godzilla versus King Kong. Oh, really? And then, like, as soon as you saw that, you started to, you know, watch all the movies in the franchise, or? When they came on TV, at T on TNT, it was, I was, I was just a kid. I didn't, like, collect movies back then. I didn't even know they were releasing new Godzilla movies in the 90s, because they never, never were released in the United <laughs> States until, like, like, five years after they came out in Japan. So I was, like, I didn't even know they existed until... When I, I think older. I think my first exposure to like uh, the whole entire world of just kaiju was my uh, let's see it was a show back in the nineties that was based upon this Japanese show. It was called Mighty Morphin Power Ranger, which was like an adaptation yeah, of Super yes. Sentai. Yes, so basically, I my watch Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, I watch that all the time. It's yeah, basically, my first ever kind of exposure to this whole entire genre was power rangers and i didn't know at the time it was japanese until i just watched it i guess later on again and just research about it and then as i guess my first ever godzilla um my first ever godzilla movie i saw was the 1998 remake <laughs> when i was a kid <laughs> you know i liked that one as a, as a kid but um it, it, the thing is if it doesn't breathe atomic fire, it's not Godzilla. <laughs> exactly. Like when I watched that movie again later on, like like when I just rewatched it, it was just so horrible because like it was not true to the franchise, not at all. <laughs> as, as an adaptation of Godzilla, it's dog shit. But as a monster, as a cheeseball monster movie, it's all right. Exactly. Like it was just like you look at it as a Godzilla movie, it's just awful. But like it's a. It was, as a mon just call it something else. If it had a different title, it would be all right. Okay. But then I, but my first Japanese Godzilla movie was uh, Godzilla versus Mechagodzilla in 2004. And I believe it was through my father. I saw the movie through a rental at Blockbuster, and I just started watching which the franchise. Which, which version of Godzilla versus – there's actually three. Yeah, I know. Godzilla it was like three versions of it. It was uh, the one in 1974. The, oh, the seventy four, the the first one, which is yes. kind of, which is probably the best of them. It's cheesy, but actually that one, uh, th that's definitely the best Godzilla movie from the seventies. Most of them kind of suck. That one, I I won't say it's that good, but it's okay. Yeah, as soon as I saw uh, Godzilla versus Mega Godzilla, then I started watching Final Wars, and then Godzilla versus Gigan. Did you watch I, my review of Final Wars? Oh yes, I have. I watched the whole entire thing. It was funny. Yeah, the, my favorite part of that movie by far is the part where he destroys uh, the American version, of the, the original Japanese Godzilla <laughs> versus the American, which they rename, who they renamed Zilla for the movie. <laughs> it just Zilla, all right. And, and he destroys him in twenty five seconds, and then the alien sends him says, "I knew that tuna eating monster was useless." <laughs> yeah, it was worth the whole that entire was funny. movie just for that, that one was scene. funny. That was funny as fuck. All right, that is just I I don't know the movies. The movies basically completely bad shit. I mean, it's kind of a so bad it's good kind of movie. It's like uh, it's so fucking insanely cheesy that it's kind of amusing. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like so much stuff. There's like the whole entire Matrix stuff that's going on. There's the whole alien taking yeah. over like the planet stuff going on. And all these fights with yes. the humans and the monster fights. Like a lot of stuff were just going on in that movie. It's like, <laughs> it was Godzilla and Crash. It just throws, it, it just throws in tons of shit. And none of it really is done all that well just because it just decided to throw in as much shit as it possibly could. <laughs> It, yeah, it's it was like this, quantity over quality. <laughs> there was like this one scene in the movie 
where there was like a pimp, a pimp, and like the cop, and like the Toho that's version. A, a to- Toho's version of New York City. That's a Toho thing. New York City. Is like. <laughs> yes. That's, that's not. But yeah, I, I think my the first time yeah, I the said cop it, says the cop says five say five minutes five seconds doesn't matter because I'm gonna bust you up. <laughs> <laughs> and the pimp's like, oh, I'm gonna kill this fool. <laughs> like this is ridiculous. <laughs> right, like as, as far as the first time I watched the first Godzilla movie, I think it was what 2006 when it was first released onto DVD, because I heard prior to watching that movie back in 2006 that. The only the American version was out there. Like you had to import it prior to it being released. No version of the original movie. Yeah, Blu-ray. it was like it was the Japanese Surpri- one. Surprisingly, it's a really good and really serious movie, which is surprising because most of like the later installments, movies like Final Wars or Godzilla versus, uh, versus Mecha Godzilla or shit like that, these are just kind of cornball, cheesy, almost ki- almost kids movies. But the original is like a dark, serious movie. <laughs> oh yeah, it was it was like really serious too. Like when you compare like the Japanese version to the American version of that movie, it's like totally different tones. Well, I mean, the American version wasn't. It didn't like completely like bastardize it. It still had somewhat a serious tone, but it it kind of removed some of the more deeper subtext. Like probably the most the darkest scene in that movie is not in the American version. A scene where basically this mom hugs her children while Godzilla's burning the city, and she grimly says to them, "We'll be with father soon." And then Godzilla torches the scorches the entire family all right like their father is dead and we're going to meet him in heaven and then godzilla right. like this is so not the godzilla that kids are cheering in the ones from the late 60s you know this is a <laughs> basically what godzilla was in the original movie he was a living nuclear bomb he was a metaphor for nuclear holocaust it n- makes nuclear weapons literally a monster that scorches everything in its path. Yeah, not to mention the whole entire tragedy of, uh, what was the guy's name, Dr. Sirizawa. Basically, like, there was, like, this love triangle in the movie, and Dr. Sirizawa had, a like, a like some sort of connection to Imiko, the woman of the movie. Yeah. And then he decided to create something that was called the Oxygen Destroyer, and then she went to the uh, basement and saw what happened to the fish tank. And <laughs> that's like the saddest part of the movie. The fact that he decided to sacrifice his whole entire life to save the planet is just really grim. Well, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a classic hero archetype. The hero sacrifices himself to save the world from, from the monster. You know, I mean, that, there, there's always a kind of a, a and particularly in Japanese culture, that's actually a very classic archetype. But it's a, it's kind of is in all, all cultures, but in Japanese culture in particular, it, it, it's very strong. Right. Like I, as far as the whole entire, you mentioned earlier that uh, that Godzilla had like this theme of nuclear weapons. Like I believe the creators of the film was was like uh, Shiro Honda, uh, Tomoyuki Tanaka. Yeah. They basically right. were inspired by that kind of events, and also like they were inspired by other monster movies. I think in particular the the Beast from Two Thousand Phantoms. Or they were inspired by that one. That that one came out a year earlier by Ray Harryhausen. Uh, but but yeah, the the main thing though is um. Japan, of course, this was only nine years after the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So just kind of that, the, what nu- nuclear holocaust has devastated that nation more than any nation has ever experienced uh, since. Even in the 70 years since, no, no nation's experienced what they experienced. And it, it really made sense that a work of fiction, a monster movie, would really try to capture the lingering horror of that event in the minds of the Japanese population. Right, and the funny thing about Godzilla, from my understanding, is that Godzilla was not meant to be the giant uh, reptile that we see today. I heard that the special effects director... Uh, uh, hey, hey, what's up? Uh, hello, what are you guys hey. doing? Great, we're, we're live right now, but uh, we're just talking about the history of Godzilla in the first movie right now. Yes, yeah, oh, so I'm joined by Godzilla himself, as you can see. <laughs> but basically, like from my my understanding was that uh, the special effects director, like uh, what was the guy's name? I forgot the game. The guy's game. It was like uh, shit. Ag Tsuburaya, that's his name. Ag Tsuburaya basically said oh, he. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he basically said that he was inspired by a giant octopus, 
and wanted to make Godzilla into a giant octopus instead of a giant reptile. Ah, <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah, that was pretty interesting. And, and he was also inspired by King Kong, I believe. Yeah, King Kong was popular in Japan. That's probably why, like, they made God's, uh, King Kong versus Godzilla so quickly. Um, and they're, they're remaking that in 2020, which is pretty insane. <laughs> exactly. It's going to happen eventually. <laughs> yeah, so, even though oh. Kong was like Kong in the original movie was only twenty five feet tall, and he's killed by and he's killed by biplanes, and he, he's fighting Godzilla, who's three hundred and fifty feet tall, shoots nuclear atomic breath out of his mouth, and survived a nuclear a nuclear explosion. All right, this seems like a lopsided fight. <laughs> this, uh, all right, if it was against the original version of King Kong, that would not be a fair fight. <laughs> <laughs> and the funny thing is, like, um, I believe it was uh, Kong Skull Island where they make King Kong super humongous. And yeah, so they, made him much, they made him much bigger, but uh, even even his super sized version of Kong in Kong Skull Island is still much smaller than the legendary version of Godzilla. But they mentioned there's a line in the movie where uh, John C. Riley says Kong's still growing, so I guess that's what justify how they're going to make him much bigger than that. In, um, in, in and and Kong and Godzilla versus Kong is set in modern times, whereas that movie is set in the seventies. So I guess in like the five decade, the four decades or so. Yeah, them. like I think the the chrono mm -hmm. the chronic the chronological order for this series is basically uh, Kong Skull Island, then Godzilla, then Godzilla two, then Kong versus uh, Godzilla. Yeah, that's how that's how it's going to be, and I guess because it's set many decades later, they're going to make him much bigger so we can fight Godzilla, which would require him to be. I did the math on this one to stand face to face with Godzilla. He would need to be twenty five hundred times his original size. <laughs> really? Like yes. I know he was really guess, really big in the like in the remake because it was like humongous when he fought against the Mutos. Yeah, it was it was giant uh, yeah. in the remake. And here's the thing, uh, funny thing I noticed. Yeah. yeah, it's very funny if you just compare the, if you just try to compare the recent Kongs, let's just say, let's just take the Peter Jackson's Kong, for example, like he's like just a couple of inches in the, like largest in the New York, like when compared to the Empire State's building, he's like a couple of inches, but Godzilla, he's just topping it. Like I can't, I can't even imagine how the fight between the two would go if just they actually collide with each other. Yeah, yeah, that version of Kong would get crushed in ten seconds. The movie would be ten seconds long. Okay, it'd just be, you just walk in there and be like, squish. All right, you're dead. You're dead. So basically, they're gonna perform like a Godzilla versus Bambi, if that were to happen. Yeah, if if you guys happen, remember, but if obviously you guys the game Shadow of Colossus, it, it's if, if imagine is Kong is the guy on the on the horse and, and Godzilla is like the giant, which is. Oh yeah. Yeah, but. But right, yeah. have you guys seen Shin Godzilla? Yes, oh I did, God. and um, I, I haven't actually. It hasn't been released here, which is so stupid. I, I don't know how. Yeah. Where do you live? Uh, I'm in Indonesia. It's far away, so I don't know. I don't know why it's not released here. Uh, yeah, I know. I know for a fact that Shin Godzilla was released here. It was released in Canada. It was released in the UK, France, uh, Germany, uh, Spain. Like it was released everywhere, but not Indonesia. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It 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 was delayed probably, or maybe I missed it. I don't know. But by the time everybody was talking about it in the in the America, and I just checked out. It hasn't been released yet. It's coming soon. But it took like two months, like three months, and it still hasn't been released yet, which I find that very weird. I don't know. <laughs> and yeah, you could just import like the, the DVD or Blu-ray that's here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I could. I could. I just, I just don't really have the time to do it. I, I do. It looks really damn good, though. It looks really cool. Uh, the effects and all. That, right, like can... I heard that the, that they use Sumation and also like the game. No, they, the... no. There, there is no suit guy in a rubber suit in Shin Godzilla. It's uh, what? No, they they used basically a large puppet in a couple scenes, but like ninety five percent of the time he's computer animated. Really? Aww. Wow. That yeah, is they, a shame. Uh, it, it looked like a suit when I watched it though. It was designed oh, to, yeah, but it was computer animated. The CGI. 
<laughs> well, yeah, but you can definitely tell uh, that Toho was working on a much lower budget than what Legendary was. Like uh, the Legendary movie from 2014 had a 160 million dollar budget. Shin Godzilla was made for 15 million dollars. So, and you can, t and it kind of you could see the, uh, the effects looking kind of cheap at times because of that. But mm -hmm. right, and it's just that's expected though. Yeah, but the funny thing about this movie, like when I watched it, I believe the directors of the movie were the same ones that were behind the giant robot show Evangelion. Yeah, yeah, well, it was really? um, a guy named Nano, yes. Yeah, and it was also the same composer, uh, too. The, what I was stunned about that movie was, one. it was kind of funny when I reviewed Godzilla Final Wars, I complained that it shoves weird shit at the audience without explaining anything. Well, it looks like the filmmakers watched my review and took that criticism to heart a little too much because Shin Godzilla fucking explains everything. How Godzilla's <laughs> body temperature works. It explains it. How, all right, how he develops. It explains it. Like a lot of the movies just them spouting off all this jargon about how he works and you feel like you almost need to take notes on it all. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I, I, I gotta give him credit though. They try so hard to put in so much detail on the thing. Oh, there's nice. yeah, there's a lot of detail. There's the movie's insane on its level of detail, and it's kind of hard because I I don't speak Japanese, and I watched the film subtitled, and I was just having to read all this shit that it kept throwing <laughs> at the screen. <laughs> all right. Oh yeah, like I know that almost every character like had like uh, some sort of Japanese text for the name of the character and the devices that they use. The same kind of style for Evangelion. Uh, I I didn't really notice that. I I just now noticed that apparently Hideaki Anno was the one directing this. That's that's interesting. I I will I will definitely watch this because I didn't like Evangelion, so I will watch this. Okay, um, what was your first exposure to Godzilla? My first exposure? Um, I was... It was the 1998 movie. <laughs> oh, same here. I just said that. Uh, right. But, that, but Toho says that mo one's not Godzilla. That's mo That one's Zilla now. That's, they renamed that monster. That That is Zilla. That is not Godzilla. Even I thought that was that was a crap movie. I, I watched it when I was a kid. That was... Oh my god. That was a do, crap movie. Do you know but I do... I, I do have seen uh the other the the Heisen era Godzillas. Uh, I forgot which one is it because I think it was Godzilla 2000. They aired it a couple of times here, but I only barely watched it. Also, Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla. I also watched it, but again, it was uh, it was barely uh they, I was barely watching it at times because. I wasn't really interested in Godzilla in terms of kaiju stuff. I was more interested with Ultraman. That was the one that I'm more interested in. Oh, man. Like, I remember being exposed to Ultraman. I believe it was, yeah, the mid 2000s when I first got exposed to Ultraman. It was the first Ultraman show, the one that was made in 1966. Mm hmm. And then I think I saw the Ultra 7 that was made in 19, what was it, 1967. And then bef and then I saw Ultra Q, which was like a prequel to Ultraman. Oh, I, did, I didn't know that. I, I knew, I know the lineups of the Ultraman. I knew uh, the original Ultraman, I knew uh, 7, and then you got Ace, you got Taro, you got Q. But those are the Hasten era Ultraman, I don't really got familiar with it. I'm more familiar with the uh, Showa era. Uh, Tiga, Dinah, Gaia, uh, uh, Tiga, Dinah, Daya, Gaia, Cosmos, and then Nexus, and then the rest. Those are those are my source of Ultraman. I know that there was just one episode where it was clearly, <laughs> clearly was Godzilla, but they had like some sort of thing around his neck when he was fighting yeah. against Ultraman. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's there. They clearly have a lot of um. What do you? I think they call it the term XPs. Basically, just sort of a rip off. Uh, sort of rip off of basically things that are already existing. Uh, a lot of Ultraman does this. Uh, monsters that already existed. Uh, already just sort of IP. They decided to uh, modify it a little bit so that it kind of looks like it. So that to to you know not get to get away with copyright or anything like that but sometimes they do fight licensed monsters but i i which I forgot i think they do fight mothra but i forgot which which ultra bad was it um hey red nice robots it, hello 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 i'm an idiot <laughs> of course <laughs> uh we were just talking about like how we were exposed to uh godzilla and kaiju when were you first exposed to that 
Um, back when I was a when I was a kid, they had the uh, the the local Fox Twenty Three, uh, and of course, as a result of being, you know, this is oh thirty years ago, um, uh, you know, being a, a local channel without a lot of budget, they bought a ton of old kaiju movies and old kung fu movies. So that was my first exposure Saturday afternoons, you know, after the, you know, basically for the shut-ins like myself, they just ran a marathon of giant rubber monsters and and kung fu fighting. It was absolutely fantastic. <laughs> and Final Wars decided to combine them together. <laughs> a little bit, yeah, a little bit, yeah. Uh -huh, yeah. What? Well, you know there's a joke in um what is it? In uh, Giant Monster, one from 2001, a Toho Godzilla movie from 2001, uh, Godzilla, Mothra, King Ghidorah, Giant Monsters All Out of Attack. There's actually a line when uh, they say, it's been 50 years since Godzilla attacked J Japan, but the threat hasn't gone away. J a few years ago, a Godzilla-like creature attacked New York City. They're like, wasn't that they say, wasn't that monster that attacked New York Godzilla? That's what the Americans claimed, but our guys <laughs> <laughs> That was pretty good. Um, I, yeah, I don't know about you, it's in the but movie. The, it really the is in the movie. The nickname for that, that that particular Godzilla that circulated here in my local was Gino. <laughs> Godzilla in name only. No, exactly. well, Toho, Toho official, officially renamed that monster Zilla, okay? Yeah. That's what they, <laughs> that's what they He will always be Gino to me. I, I don't know which movie it is. They actually feature the original 1998 Godzilla. And the, the original was like CGI, and the, suit, the rubber suit Godzilla just beat it in like a punch. I don't, I, I don't know. It was Final it. Wars. Uh, Final Wars, was like, that was, fun. That was interesting. Was yes, and that the alien funny. that sends him there, he says, he, he's, after, the, after the real Godzilla kills him, he says, I knew that tuna eating monster was useless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And on this trailers, even uh, when they did the uh, one for the 1998 Godzilla, they said a movie, a movie that was considered so terrible, the Japanese felt the need to distance themselves from it. And they showed that joke from, <laughs> from they showed first that joke from Giant Monsters All Out Attack about the New York attack, and then at the and then say and then have the real Godzilla kick its ass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, hey, Red Robot, have you seen Shin Godzilla? I have not. Um, from what I've seen of it, I'm I'm I, I'm like kind of wincing with one hand, go, one eye, going, "Oh God!" Um, I, I thought it was the I thought it was the best best Toho Godzilla movie since uh, Destroya. Okay, I thought it was um, it, it was genuinely a pretty good movie. All, all right, but it, it definitely had some problems. Like I thought the, it was the, a little too talky. The eyed mini guy, the baby Godzilla was kind of was part where I just went, "What the fuck were they thinking?" <laughs> But it's not like the first time they did the baby Godzilla angle. Like there was like the son of Godzilla that oh, also God. explored that. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 that's, oh, that's, that's, that's okay. okay. But it was just it was just the googly eye part where I'm just like, are you sure this is a good idea? <laughs> well, or are you yeah. sure? <laughs> Let's, the worst Godzilla movie is easily um, All Monsters Attack, the one from 1969. That movie is a piece of dog shit. What the no, fuck? No, 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 no. I, I would contend that the worst one is the one with Jet Jaguar. Although, uh, although Jaguar. as a kid, and in, in my nostalgia heart, I love that movie. <laughs> but it's it was a Power terrible. Rangers movie. It it's just so far removed from the way the character originally was when he was a... Um, uh, he was a, a terrifying abomination that was a threat to all mankind. That was a, a living nuclear weapon. That was an allegory for the destruction and death in, of the atomic bombings in Japan. You know, in what fifteen years, this is what he's become. Yeah. What? <laughs> the, the, <laughs> the flying jump kick where his tail drags the ground. That was awesome. It's like, oh god. Yeah. It was also a moment in Hedera where, like, he uses an atomic ray to go off the ground. There's that, yeah. Yeah. The, the, Hodor, so, yeah, the Hodora you, movie was pretty bad. What are your guys' opinions, though, of the the new Amer the new American series, the Legendary series? Um, it's, it's better than Godzilla and Name Only, so. Yes, oh, yeah. but oh, it's definitely. Uh, I should oh, have yeah. known that this was going to going to be bad because they were like, oh, directed by the guy who who did Monsters, and if you've seen that, it's not a bad movie, and I thought. One of the reasons that we didn't see the monster ver monsters very much is because of budgetary reasons, and that's probably true. 
Then I watched the Godzilla movie he made, and I realized, oh, that's just how he likes to do things. Well, you know, they have a new director for the sequel, Godzilla like God King of Monsters. Monsters. Yeah, but I still like the 2014 movie. It, it definitely it definitely overdid the teasing aspect, but it had a couple really awesome moments. Like when he first uses the atomic breath, the way it the way it built that scene up was really perfectly done. Okay, the cinematography there was all perfect. The way you first see the, the character the main character's face glow blue, and then the Muto just kind of like turns its head and like and you see you Godzilla charging up and then boom all right that was just a big like wow moment everyone was cheering yeah i'm so glad they're getting rid of that guy though because his habit of cutting away from perfectly good fight scenes is pissing me off <laughs> i really you know, you know the made. sequel is gonna have a, a mothra rodan and king Ghidorah. yeah essentially it's like a remake oh. of Ghidorah, the street uh, monster i i'm 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 kind of i i'm i'm i'm, I'm Curious and and also in slight terror of what they'll do to my favorite kaiju. Uh, I'm kind of he's, he's not in this one, so it'll be a while. I'm well, kind of I'm, I'm kind of concerned too, and for different reasons. The reason why I'm concerned is because the director of the movie for the second Godzilla film, uh -huh. I believe he's the same director who directed the the Death Note movie on Netflix. Is he? I, I he? just know he's the guy who did yeah. the, the Cramp Krampus, Krampus. You know that that whole Christmas horror movie. Oh. I just know he was the same guy who did that. Oh, uh, let me find a guy's name. I'm gonna find it one second, guys. I'm trying to remember. Um, I don't think Edwards is a bad director. No. Like I like Star Wars Rogue it's One. It's Adam Rengard. Okay. No, um, I, he did. He did direct the new Godzilla. He did direct Krampus, though. Krampus was uh, it was all right. It, it's a it's a horror Christmas sort of movie of some sort. That reminds me. It's only related tangentially to kaiju, but I'm spoiling it a little bit. But if you get a chance to see a, a movie, it's a it's a Norwegian movie uh, called Rare Exports. If you find it on Netflix, it only shows up during Christmas. But it's a it's a horror story about uh, sort of about Santa Claus. But it turns out the spoilers it, the, the you never get to see him do anything. But you, when you finally see Santa Claus, he's this giant hunched humanoid. I just my first thought was kaiju claws. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's really it's actually a good movie, but it's really really weird and creepy. So anyway, ah. but uh, okay. hopefully Angiris shows up at some point in the in the movies because yeah, supposedly the sequel, the only like actor that's going to return is um uh, uh, actor Ken Watanabe. Uh, the, uh, he's the only one who's coming back. Every all right, like Aaron Taylor Johnson, Elizabeth Olsen won't be back. Oh thank God. <laughs> so pretty yeah, much. That yeah, I just want yeah. to see him again. Uh, Ken Watanabe again. He's the best part. He's one of the best parts in the movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Isn't that he, woman he, from Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon also in the movie? I'm not for the sure. second one? Uh, I don't remember. He had, he, had sure. the, he had the best line. Let them fight. Yeah, I, that, I, that that has become one of my favorite memes when I see two people arguing online and, and they're like, no, fight. I'm not getting involved. Tag that. Let them fight. <laughs> it, it's, it's especially usually when two people that you really hate arguing with each, with each other. I just want to put that meme in. <laughs> exactly. Let, yeah, uh, that it's, that it's, meme. Uh, let them let them fight. Yeah. It's a, the, it's a it's an it's a newer version of the uh, let's you and him fight from uh, from the Illuminati card game that I used to like. It was it was basically just where you would ba it was in the card game you would basically prompt two other people to have their minions attack. So you could weaken them or what have you. So whoever, whoever, somebody died, you would win. So that's what you know. Let's you and him fight, and it's like let them fight. Same thing. <laughs> and, I think, and I think the like the very end of that movie is like is really cool when the, he just kind of walks out and everyone just kind of stares at him in awe as he returns back to the sea. All right, and and I like that the the, uh, the billboard says "Savior of the City, King of Monsters?" Question mark. Like question uh, mark. <laughs> yeah, like they're not really. That would be the appropriate response. Of, well. He saved the day, but he also irradiated the city. Right, he did. Yeah, yeah. Him. At a time where he was, uh, where he was trying to cross that bridge, uh, he's basically unnecessarily trying to like destroy some of the people, some of the people like the the people who are in the He's boats. Godzilla. Okay, Godzilla's yeah. gonna destroy shit. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really notice it's. Um, what I interpreted oh, oh. though is, um, I, I think he sees human, the human beings as insects to him. All right, he didn't. He was out to kill the Mutos. That was his mission, and he didn't care what was in his way. All right, he was out. That was his goal. He, and once he was finished, he just decided to return back to the sea because uh, he had already accomplished what he set out to do. The um, he went, and he wanted to kill them because it mentions that they lay their eggs in the bodies of other giant monsters. Okay, so yeah. so he yeah. has incentive to not want to see them reproduce. 
Um, uh, do any, any of you guys play uh, a miniature war games? Uh, sorry, no, no, no? not okay. <laughs> well, there, well, it's probably it's well past its prime anyway. But the, the the another reference to Godzilla that I found was interesting. There was a game called Ogre. It was it was not in, there were not any actually ogres in it. They just the, the huge mega tanks that were called ogres, and then you know it was all in the, for, for our future. But at one point they published in, in their official magazine. They said, "Hey, you want to play Godzilla? Here's how you do it." <laughs> just replacing the the mega tank with Godzilla instead. Like oh oh, oh wow. Oh, by the way, guys, have you guys heard of a? Uh, there's this a PS4 game called City Shrouded in Clouds. That is that looks pretty dead. Oh yes, yeah, so is that the game with Ultraman and Godzilla and those other kaiju? Yeah, it's a okay. game with lots and lots of kaiju in there. It, it looks fantastic. I, uh, I would... well, here's a movie we haven't brought yeah. up yet, though. Uh, there's a new Pacific Rim uh, out ne uh, next year. All right, are yes. you all on yeah, of course. Yes, uh, definitely. You would think I would have loved that movie because it combines the two things I love most, giant robots and giant monsters. And it somehow managed to be See, terrible what? the entire time. Pacific Rim? Yes, it's awful. I, like uh, I refer to it as Pacific Rim job. It's so bad. <laughs> oh, come on. What other movie? Look, here's why, here's why you're wrong, okay? okay? What other movie features a 200-foot-tall robot dragging an ocean liner through the fucking city and then using it as a bat, as a bat to hit a giant monster in its fucking face? That's a specific <laughs> <laughs> in the world. I agree with that. It does not save a movie. Because here's, here's two things that they fucked up with, 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 the, with the movie. Uh, because of the way they did, they did the piloting, the whole, the whole synchronization thing, um, that wasted a large part of the movie where we could have done something else more important. Because remember, we get these other cool pilots and teams, and when they die, you don't really care because we never had a chance to get to know them because they had to waste screen time with the pairing of the two, the two, new, the, the two new pilot team. And the other place they fucked up, because they, they could have still done the team thing and a little yeah, bit of bonding. Yeah, it was the where, kind of one was the like, typical like lead a pilot. Shirt on, you know, so like, well, you know, like like they would have done if they'd have done it like like you do a, a modern uh, EWAC jet where you have a pilot and an operator. That would have made sense. But the other thing they fucked up is the the the, the giant monsters. We needed one main one that kept coming back, so we had no, an we identifiable didn't. villain. No, we didn't. Yeah, what well, can you imagine if there, if, if throughout there no, there was did. one that who had never been quite good. defeated, drove off a couple of times, but never really defeated, and he shows up a couple of times throughout the movie. You know, I like, don't he's the that. kaiju who destroyed the mecha in the first place. He's the kaiju who gets, you know, with one of the others gets defeated. Then at the very end, you think he's dead. He comes back like one arm, going reaching down as the last, as the, as the, you know, Gypsy Danger explodes. That would have been great. I don't think so. So basically, tease for a new monster in a sequel. <laughs> Well, the, since they go through monsters like Pop Candy in, in Pacific Rim, who cares? They never <laughs> name. We have to name them. They don't. That's what I mean. Yeah, There's no sorry. character to the bad, to the, to the bad guy kaiju. Come to think well, of it, they're, they're I think I think there's a lot of part of the Pacific Rim is the fact that the monsters are the kaiju's. Actually, they are literally named the kaiju's. They're they're hard to beat. Like um, a lot yeah. of the factors in they're very difficult to to destroy. And in fact, one of the parts in the movie is when they go un literally have to go underwater to destroy their nest. Which begs the question: Like, what 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 else are they going to fight in the second one? Like, like literally alien invasion from space or something? I don't know. Who knows? They'll come up with something. Well, I would <laughs> imagine that the the enemy that we're sending the kaiju through in the first place, you know, they they'll want revenge. Yeah. And so oh, we're nice. opening up a seam somewhere else. So, like, say we have them fighting in the Arctic instead of underwater because the underwater fights weren't that entertaining. <laughs> I thought yeah. That it it made like going it, slow mo. It, it looks, I got 3D TV and Pacific Rim looks bitching on that thing. Oh my god! Don't, don't get me wrong. Visually, it's a treat. It's it's like it's like a um, it's like a souffle. All flavor, no substance. What's well, a mo giant monster movies? I mean, substance is kind of few and far between on them. Let's be honest. Like the original well, I mean, Godzilla no substance. Like, yeah, but uh, all out monster attack versus versus destroy all monsters. Come on, substance matters. Yeah, I you mean, cared about monsters, the characters in in, well, in all, all monsters, monsters attack. attack. You like didn't give a shit monsters, about anybody but... in Destroy All Monsters. Well, all monsters attack is preschool bullshit. It's a it's a shitty. It's a piece of dog crap. <laughs> I know that's part of the reason it's a piece of dog crap is because because it, it, nobody care, you don't really care have any investment in what's going on. Well, because right, like they're, 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 a, a, you just you miserably used stock footage from earlier movies. Two, well, yeah. the plot was the plot was fucking retarded. It was all this kid's dream and the. Minya talked, and oh god, that was a piece of god. Uh, it was terrible. I, I'm not gonna lie, but that's part of the reason why it was awful. 
<laughs> have you guys watched any other kaiju movies outside of Godzilla? Like, have you guys seen yeah. other stuff from Toho? Yeah, I've seen some. I have. I actually oh, have I a, a, a. I don't know. Straight up admit, some of it's bootleg because there's no other way to get it. But. <laughs> but have you guys seen stuff like I don't know, The War of the Gigantras or Yes. Yeah. Oh, uh, Frankenstein rules the world. I, I I set it up for a bad movie night with some friends. We were getting really drunk, and we were just sitting there going, "This is actually pretty good." I mean, for its time. I mean, we were expecting yeah. trash, and it was like, like, it actually has a plot. Holy shit. <laughs> Right. And it was also, let's see, Frankenstein Conquers the World. Uh, it was also, fuck. Rodan and there was Mothra. I believe it was like 1961 when it was made. Yeah. Uh, there are some more recent Mothra movies that are pretty good too. Like the ones that was made in the, the what, the 90s or something? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why is Mason getting Gamera? <laughs> yeah. He is full of turtle meat. <laughs> the, 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 the only Ninja way Turtles. the only way I can watch the Gamera movies is through Mystery Science Theater. The older it, ones, no, the yeah, the older like, ones are trash. The older ones are trash. The original eight are trash, but the '90s reboot that trilogy are actually oh, yes. yeah, those are pretty good. Much, yeah, those are much, pretty they're actually good. They're they're much better. In fact, they're much better than most of the Godzilla movies. Those three Gamera, that that those three uh, Gamera movies are probably better than at least like. The third one's kind of. I thought the third one was good, but, but yeah, I mean, it's not terrible. I mean, you know, again, and it's and they were made on lo even lower budgets than the Godzilla movies, and yet uh, they're pretty. Yet they're actually better in in some ways. Well, it's, uh, well, see, sometimes the 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 substance of the story matters. Like the one with the uh, the glowing, I forget the fucking name of the Iris Gamera versus Iris. That one had a plot. You had a character to care about. Yeah, and they, I did. They completely trashed that in the third one, where it's like it's a sort of some weird revenge plot, and the characters weird were just revenge plot. Yeah, but yeah, just comical. It was just really bad. It kind of makes sense though that she would want revenge on Gamera because these monsters. It was oh, clear, yeah, the, the motivation was good. The execution was awful. I but it's clear that Gamera's exploits in the previous two movies would have left a body count. Oh yeah, good god, <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh yeah, like there was just just so much bad moments in the original ones. Like <laughs> oh my god. It was like this part, I believe it was what was it? I forgot these names of these movies. It was Gamera versus Giron, where there was like Gamera just going to this what was it, some sort of thing and just spinning in a circle and then jumping off and just <laughs> just putting his hands up in the air. Like I said, the original movies I, I highly recommend. You ever watch uh, Brendan Todd's cult movie reviews? He did like all the Gamera, the original ga eight Gamera movies, and all those reviews are very entertaining. And it was also really bloody too. Like it was supposed to be aimed for kids, but it was just all gory. Let's see. That's what's interesting. Um, <laughs> yeah, like they just had the monsters just bleeding as soon as like Gamera get cut, or like if a monster just gets split into half. Like there was this scene. Where I believe the giant monster had a giant knife head and just split yeah. guiles into like meat. <laughs> yeah, giant knife head. That, oh, good God. Um, what, about, what does everybody think of Cloverfield? Um, it was pretty good. Uh, uh, I'm not a fan. Okay. The uh, I, I, I liked it, but it, it has it's it's. I'm not sure about rewatching. It's it does it doesn't bear, it doesn't hold up to a lot of reviews. Re reviewing. The shaky cam drove me nuts. I couldn't watch it. it made me it made me feel sick. It was yeah, that's definitely love, love it or hate it on that one. Honestly, I I I'm, I think these found footage movies, the vast majority of them are garbage. I think okay? it was actually uh, what was that movie called? It was uh yes, it was Cannibal Holocaust. I started the whole entire genre. No, it was yeah. Blair Witch Project. Yeah, really? Uh, yeah, Blair Witch Project. It I think was popularized it's early. I have I have another All right. un the marketing the marketing of Blair Witch Project was brilliant because yes. they like at a website saying that the cast was missing and presumed dead, saying that it was real found footage of something that really happened. Bullshit. A total lie, okay? Yeah, the course. cast are yeah. all fine. But it was it was kind of fun and uh, hey like Hey, what's up? I decided to invite you because you're a kaiju fan too. So uh when were you first exposed to Godzilla? 
uh, my first exposure was actually the Hanna Barbera cartoon. Oh Jesus! <laughs> oh that fucking cartoon. Oh I, uh, yeah. I saw one on Cartoon Network. Yeah, yeah, that's that's so self. <laughs> <laughs> and what really sucked about it is they. All oh, right, Anna Barbera licensed from Toho Godzilla, but they didn't license his roar. So he didn't have his fucking. He didn't have the fucking Godzilla roar. All right. <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> like, oh, did anybody see the 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 more recent Godzilla uh, cartoon? That actually is actually. Oh god, the one's not actually all that bad, really. The one from Fox. It actually is the yeah. yeah it's much half decent. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's like a yeah, that one was okay. Movie and um, yeah, it's actually much. It's better than the 1998 movie. It's actually a decent cartoon. Much better than the Hanna Barbera one. Oh yeah, that's well, yeah, ironic. That's a low bar to hold, though. <laughs> it's ironic because usually cartoons based on movies do worse than the movies. <laughs> Not that one, no. Oh yeah, it was, was, it was, was way movie. better, <laughs> way better than the movie. Yeah, for, for one thing, oh, they gave Zilla your atomic breath. What a fucking thing! I got Zilla who breathes atomic fire. What? <laughs> oh. Thank you. Have you guys heard about that new uh, animated movie that's going to come out this year in Japan? What's that? Which? Yeah, I, I watched the trailer. It looked like crap. All right, it, the animation was really bad. Wait, which one? Like it's CGI or like uh, traditional? It's CGI, but my God, it's it looks like it was something a decade ago that would have been fine. Today, not so much. Okay, all right. It, it looked it looked like it was missing frames. It looked really choppy. It was huh. like I'm like that's all that. Like, what was the budget of this movie? Ten a uh, 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 few hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, but like the thing about the previews is that they don't really you know kind of represent the final product because they might still work on the CGI to make it better. I mean, at least I hope so because like from what you're describing, it sounds pretty awful. But what's your guys' favorite Godzilla movies? The top five. Um, one of uh, Final War is definitely high on that list. Oh come on, um, Final War is one of the worst. <laughs> but, well, the I like entertainment it. value is hard to deny, though. If you're just looking for popcorn entertainment, it's a great movie. Oh yeah, <laughs> I guess. It, I mean, did you watch? Uh, did anyone besides Tyler watch my review of Godzilla Final Wars? I, it's one of my loudmouth reviews. Uh, I haven't seen it. Um, you I, guys I, I, all should subscribe to me and watch it. Yeah. Yeah, my favorite <laughs> Mecha Godzilla is another more classic one, and then the original Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla. Um. Okay, that's three. Oh God. <laughs> I, 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 I just I, I just saw the the Godzilla Planet of the Monsters trailer. Yeah, I can see what you're talking about. That yeah. that's. Hmm. That is 3D CGI and anime. That is just experimental, and nobody. Uh, not not one person who has tried it has ever actually made it good, especially <laughs> you, Berserk. Especially you. I'll get I'll get I'll get my top the top five. No, number five, Godzilla versus Biollante. Num all right. Number four, Godzilla versus King Ghidorah, the nineteen ninety one movie. Number three, Godzilla versus uh, uh, all right. Number three, Return of God uh, Godzilla. Number four, number number two, the recent uh, the twenty fourteen American one, and the number one. The original. Okay, my list is uh, Godzilla, uh, Ghidorah, the Street Monster, Monster, uh, Monster vs. Godzilla. Another one is Mega Godzilla. Oh, guys, like a lot of them are these, the older movies. And the, my, my final one is perhaps, uh, shit, uh, Destroy a Monster. Hmm. Destroy is a kind of an underrated one, too. The one yeah, from 1995. I would say, one like number five is well in no particular order although except for the last one uh i really liked you know uh, godzilla versus destroya um yeah. the godzilla versus mecha godzilla the the one shit the, the one after godzilla versus king Ghidorah, the king door where they had him under you know the cyborg head oh uh, it was uh monster zero i think yeah monster zero um the gods i'm probably gonna get shit for this but godzilla no, you're, you're confusing. I actually really enjoyed um, that's, that one's okay. Course, the Godzilla raids again is one of my favorite because that's where that's when we first get Angiras, which is my favorite kaiju, and then uh, All Out Monster Attack, where Godzilla is the villain again with the dead eyes and all that. That's that's absolutely my like. If if I ever see someone that's who's never really seen like a Godzilla movie seriously before, I show them that one first. So that's a ringing endorsement if if there ever was one. 
Well, that one that one actually is like of the six millennium movies, the ones that came up between 1999 and 2004. Yeah. I would definitely say that one was the best of them. I really do. I, I actually, I couldn't. Friend. I had a hard time finishing Biolante, so I'm I'm not sure what you see in it. But I, if it's that, if that's your speed, I mean, Biolante really, looked really, really Biolante good time. for the character design. It looked just. Oh know. yeah, the monster's cool. The execution was the problem. I thought, but I, th I also like I liked with Biolante that it had a decent human plot. I liked that there was a plot of a different governments what uh, yep. stealing Godzilla's cells. I thought that was actually pretty clever because it makes yeah. sense that if Godzilla was real, that there would that there would be like experimental value in his cells. Oh Jesus! And, yeah, that's and a good point. Generation. So, so I found that whole plot line real uh, very clever, and the whole idea of nuclear bac bacteria. Have and, you guys? Yeah, have you Biolante guys? Biolante was a really cool, well-designed monster too, as well. Have you guys seen the deleted scene for Biolante? Huh. No, like basically, like I saw on YouTube, like there was like these deleted scenes. Of supposed anime parts that was supposed to be in the movie, huh. huh? And there was also some parts that were actually stop motion when Godzilla was fighting against Biolante. Weird. Hmm. I do find it interesting though that uh, I want to know how exactly you can make a human plot in a Godzilla movie work. Which one is the best one? I think because because I can't really the original. The original is like um, the love triangle, the love triangle between the three main characters, and the fact that the, the that are the main scientist character I forgot his name sacrificed himself. It was um, the best was human plot. Yes, yeah, that that is the best human plot in a Godzilla movie. It was actually very well done, well acted, like genuinely a good movie. Like not even just a good monster movie, a good good flick. You know, smart movie. Ah. Oh. I just, I just, no, I just, I just really, because, you know, when you try to direct Godzilla, Godzilla's not exactly, like, have a good personality and everything like that. It's going to need to, like, a human plot that moves it. And even, like, in the recent Godzilla movies, I've seen, yeah. like, that's the issue with it. Uh, it's usually, because it's just humans in a monster movie, they usually just expendables and everything like that. So I'm just, that's just one of the elements that I'm kind of worried in, like, how to pull it, pull off a, good Godzilla flick. Well, yeah, like, basically the characters are just there to just drive the monsters, and I guess, in terms of the plot, the best one is the original. It's like the best kind of counterbalance of humans and monster action. Yeah. And, and, and the original, basically, we could tell with Shin Godzilla, the most recent one, they were trying to uh, bring Godzilla back to what he was meant to be in the original. If you actually watch the, like, look at the original... Before he was completely designed, some of the original sketches. He originally was going to be more gruesome. He originally was going to look like he was burnt, like a like a burn victim from the bomb. Okay, like, yeah. I mean, that's originally what he was going to look like, all scarred up and nasty. But they dialed that back because it was too gruesome. With Shin Godzilla, you could tell that the design looks a lot like those original sketches. He looks like the original, but more <laughs> bloodied up and gruesome. All right, and and the, he just has a soulless look in his face. Like this is just. This is a monster that has no feelings. It's just pure destruction. Yeah. I, I do find it interesting that the movie, the original one, it got initially a negative reception. That is, that's interesting. Really? It was, actually, it was the yeah. most expensive it, Japanese really... movie ever made at the time it came out. It cost a million dollars. But in yeah. today's money, it would be like eight million bucks. But back then, it was the most expensive Japanese movie ever made. I thought it was also like uh, Seven Samurai that was also really expensive. That one, that one as well, but the original Godzilla was the most expensive Japanese movie. Because you got to think of the that whole ci the whole city destruction scene. They had to build up all those models and then destroy them perfectly, and all those, and they had to composite the suit actor in scenes with with real actors. All that probably was pretty advanced stuff. Oh, speaking about the suit actor, like, uh, oh, what's that guy's? I forgot the guy's name, but it was. Uh... Oh shit! It was the suit actor of Godzilla that died recently. Yeah, I think. he died recently. Yeah, I forgot his name as well, but yes, I heard about that. It was uh, Hiroshima. What was I forgot? Let me search it up real quickly. Yeah. Hold on. 
And you got to give those suit actors more credit than they get because that suit weighed 200 pounds and was hot as hell. Like the actor, like uh, passed out of uh, dehydration numerous times while they shot them. Shot them. One time he had to be rushed to the hospital. Can you imagine like wearing all that rubber? Like imagine like partying in a Halloween mask. You get sweaty after a while. Imagine like 200 pounds of rubber all over you. His name is Haru Haru Nakajima. That's the original suit actor for Godzilla. Okay. I can kind of sympathize what that what that's sort of like because if any of you ever been, been to Chuck E. Cheese and you had that poor fool in the suit, yeah, but yeah. There was, I've been that guy. Than that. Oh mm. shit! Yeah, but it's much worse than that. I, oh I, yeah, it's much worse than that. <laughs> I watched yeah. some of the behind the scenes footage and basically they could only film uh, the scenes for like a few minutes and then they would have like a team rush onto the stage and rip the suit off him quick because if he wore that suit too long, all right, it'd kill him. All right, yeah. it was. It was risky. It's dangerous to wear those suits. So you, <laughs> yeah, oh, God. That's why I Shin Godzilla didn't use any suits the, anymore. Yeah, the, 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 yeah, the kaiju that have to crawl, like Angiris. I feel feel sorry for the actors, especially who do that, because you're like, you're on your knees, too. You're like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I cannot imagine the guy inside the Ghidorah suit with all those three heads. Uh, well, there, he actually a couple people inside that one. Doing this, still, like waving his hands in the air, like he just don't care. Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure yeah. he's not the, the way that it's wire acted on the heads. I don't think he puts his arms in there. <laughs> yeah, it was just the wires on the heads, and I guess just walking if he was to walk. I bet the Mecha Godzilla could, in theory, be le less so because it didn't have to be foam. Uh, that'd be a little better, but not much. Yeah, I probably think it would be like less than Yeah, and Rodan's purely a puppet, so that's easy. Same with Mothra, so that's good. I thought like the original one had like a guy in a suit too. I could be wrong about that because they got yeah, the right for the, the scenes where he's on the ground. I think there's a guy in the suit, but he's a puppet when he's flying, of course. So because otherwise that'd be kind of nuts. <laughs> Can you imagine being in the suit? Then okay, now and all, I'm gonna get put you in the foam suit. We're gonna hang your ass from the ceiling and fly you around like a toy. <laughs> <laughs> the <other foot. laughs> That's kind of funny because not only was the original Godzilla really serious, but the Rodan movie was also really serious. If you guys watched that, you know the the funniest line in that movie is actually a, I don't know if this was a mistranslation, but at the end when the two Rodan characters die. The main character looks at them and says, "Watching the the two Rodans die is so, is heartbreaking. I wonder if someday I'll I'll have a chance to die as well." And I'm like, uh, "Give it a few, give it a few uh, decades, buddy. It'll it'll happen eventually." Uh, <laughs> well, I think in the as well, I mean, as in the quality of death, dying well. Yes, but I'm sure it'll happen funny. eventually. If you read, if yes. you read straight, you're like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. I know that the Japanese you're gonna die, buddy. That's inevitable. <laughs> yeah, I know that, that the Japanese version basically had like the two Rodans just going to the volcano, but there was like no narration at all. Yeah. Whereas like the American version, I believe it was what was George George Puchke that was actually doing the narration for the American version. Was that George Puchke? Yeah, uh, I don't, I don't he was, know. If he was like the uh, the dubbing actor for Rodan and also uh, Godzilla Rays again. Um, oh, wow. I don't know if they're still putting them out, but if you, if uh, I have managed to find like the first three Godzilla movies with the uh, the du the, you know, the the collector's edition dual pack that has both both the the American version and the and the original version. I got the, the I got the yeah I got the Crichton version of the original movie, which there's is both a Criterion American. version of these movies. Well, of yeah, course it is. is. There is a Criterion version of the uh, just of the original, and okay. uh, it has, but it has both the original cut, Japanese cut and the American cut are both on one Blu-ray disc. Yeah, those those are nice. I, uh... they, they, Crichton did a good restoration. Got definitely looked a lot better than the movie uh, ever looked uh, that I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, like before. The, the the funny the cool thing about the whole entire package for the Criterion edition, like when you start to open up, it's basically like Godzilla's head just pops out. <laughs> nice. yeah. um, so what did you guys think of King Kong? Not the more recent one, Skull Island, but the original. Uh, it was really it's good. Classic. It's a classic. I mean, yeah, the, yeah, the, the, the kaiju movie is perfect. 
the the effects are phenomenal for 1933. I mean, like the, the it was so far more advanced than anything that had come before it. It, yeah. it, it. That's why it blew audiences away. And what's really funny is you can see the hair move on him, and that was actually unintentional. When they moved the puppet, their fingers would have to touch it, and that would yeah. move the hairs around. But people would say this movie's when it came out. This the, it's so, the effects are so realistic. You can actually see Kong's hair blow, blowing. All right, even though that was unintentional, <laughs> it actually made it, it. It actually made it more realistic. Um, that reminds yeah, me. I cannot another... imagine being the guy just you know taking his sweet time, just doing every ounce of stop motion step by step by step. Like yeah, have you like watched all like the yeah. like, Harry Harryhausen's work? Like um, what is it up? Uh, Seven Voyages of Sinbad, uh, Jason and the Argonauts, like the the, uh -huh. the Hydra in that movie. I mean, can you imagine having to animate all those different heads? Oh, no. Remember, Ray Harryhausen must have had a photographic memory, okay? Because there's no way the average person could do what he did. They all right? Because they didn't have like computer reference the way they could today. He had to do all that shit from memory, okay? Back and then, then. Well, and then uh, yeah. well, the Beast from Twenty Thousand Fathoms. If you've ever seen that, I think I, in some ways, at least as far as the monster animation, it's better than King Kong. Because at one point you're watching this, he does, the, he gets the tongue. You watch it breathe. I'm like, this man did this shit wow. by hand. <laughs> Ray Harryhausen was a genius. Okay, he was yeah, a, he was ahead of his time. Yeah, you compare his, the effects in his movies versus anything anybody else's. They're like they're like well ahead of his time. All right, oh, yeah. it, it's astounding. And the the recent. CG King Kong, the one uh, uh, Peter Jackson made. That one was pretty good too. Yeah, I I, I, I like that. Movie. That that was the King Kong movie I really liked. I have. I mean, I I liked it, but I thought it was a little kind of you know panned out or too long. It was oh, three yeah. hours long. Yeah. 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 It's the the unedited length. version. It's ridiculous. It's too long. <laughs> the, the length is the length is a bit excessive, but overall, I still thought um it was I still thought it was well done in, in most ways. Yeah, it was great. Uh, I, I especially loved the game. If, if anyone is, has anyone played the game? The game I played is a demo. <laughs> oh god, the game is great. Uh, you actually get to not only play as King Kong, but you also get to play as the as the Jack character. And as Jack, you're basically in a first person. It's basically a first person shooter. You get to fight spiders. You get to fight caterpillars. You get to fight monsters. You get to fight dinosaurs. It's wow! It is a great game. It is <laughs> such an under, it is such an underrated. It's one of the most. It's it's one of those. Um, it's a rare game, a uh, rare movie tie-in game that is actually really good. Uh, definitely, if you uh, you can use King Kong, you can use Jack. It will switch between back and forth between the two. Um, you get to use you get to use uh, King Kong in the New York City destroying cars. I fucking love that. That is great, <laughs> brilliant. Just grab cars, smash them into each other. Oh my God, I love it. Love it. Great game. Yeah, the the only kaiju game that I have is just the uh, the, the PS4 Godzilla game. Oh god! <laughs> I haven't played that, but I played some of the older ones that are that are basically it's a wrestling game with giant rubber monsters, which is fine. That oh yeah, tone, yeah, but, yeah. yeah. I I know that the PS the PS2 ones. The was it the PS2 yeah, no, ones? Yeah, like the GameCube one. Oh good. Remember this Godzilla destroyed all monsters melee. Oh man, I I love that game. <laughs> that that game was just too much fun. Now, was it was it for the GameCube or? It was the GameCube and the original Xbox. Okay. And then there was the sequel that was Godzilla Save the Earth. It was on PS2, uh, GameCube, and Xbox. And then the, the, the sequel, Godzilla Unleashed, I think, it was on the PS2 and the Wii. Huh. Yeah, yeah I remember like that one that came out, the Unleashed one, but I never played it, though. I never played the sequels. The PS2 Only games aren't that great, though. I, I've played them. They're not that great but well it, it's a nice fan service to the oh, okay. to the fans they're, 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 they're playable they're playable yeah. yep um there is i know you get probably not that big into board games but there is a little miniatures board game thing of um i can't remember the name of the name of it but basically it's it's kaiju uh, miniatures wargaming and so there are a few thinly veiled references to Godzilla, but most of the monsters are fairly original, except for like there's a Cthulhu faction. Because each faction has like three or four different mo major monsters and a whole bunch of minions that you can do when you, you're fighting versus somebody else in the cities. But the Cthulhu, the, the, the Cthulhu faction is pretty interesting. There's like UFO aliens, and then the Godzilla's ish faction come from under the earth. And they're all these kind of to, to save themselves from copyright and all that, they're they, they're kind of orangish and whatnot. 
but there's like a Japanese faction that's, that's Jap basically has Ultraman type guys. And then there's an American faction that uses these big turbo engine uh, robot things. And that when I first saw Pacific Rim, I'm going, God damn it, you guys have played that game. Because that game came out like a decade before Pacific Rim came out. I'm like, Pacific Rim was second. inspired by a lot of different things, though. Oh, no, there's nothing wrong with that. I, I wasn't like saying plagiarism, although one of them was really, 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 really close. But it was like, it's like, hi, you guys have played that too. <laughs> Oh my God. I can't remember the name of it though. Let me, let me look. Yep. 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 The only, uh, I know for a fact, besides the whole entire uh, animated shows for Godzilla, that there was actually a show produced by Toho back in the 70s that had Godzilla in it. And the show was called Zone Finder. Have you guys seen that show? No, I have not. No. 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 I've heard of it though. Oh, dude, like, I have the whole entire series on my computer. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, I could probably give you guys some links if you guys want a copy of that show. But basically, there were some episodes that actually had Godzilla in it. And it also had, like, this character, Zone Fighter, which is, like, this kind of Ultraman rip-off, just like Jet Jugar. But so it was still a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, Jet was Jaguar was monster apocalypse. It's amazing Toa wasn't sued because it's so obvious that uh, Jet Jaguar is a, a blatant ripoff of Ultraman. Oh yeah, I, mean, I guess they probably you know have some I don't know some sort of luck. What well, what was what was the Ultraman ripoff in Godzilla? I forgot the name. Jet it was Jet Jet Jaguar. Uh huh. Jet Jaguar. Jet Jaguar. <laughs> Yeah, it's complete and, complete and blatant and fucking rip off. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think that's because um in the original Ultraman they 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 they, they used a model that looked like Godzilla in an episode or something, because um since uh, both Godzilla and Ultraman were produced by Eiji Sugaraya originally, so maybe they got the rights they sort of got the rights to use like each other's likeness. Oh, that 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 is true because he used to work for Joe. Yeah. Maybe it was like Toho saying, we won't sue you for this if you don't sue us for this. And I'm like, okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's I wish I could, yeah, it was funny because he was running Super Rider Productions when he made Ultraman. And then he was also directing the Godzilla movies at the same time for the special effects. Yeah, it's... Uh... I can't believe that they're basically all the same company. They're they're basically all they're, the same. They're like totally different companies. Like Toho and Super Riot Productions are different companies. Oh, oh, I thought no. I just I don't know. They, they just sort of feel similar. <laughs> That's because like uh, Ag Super Riot, he helped with the original Godzilla movies, and so that why it probably feels similar. Ah, I see. Yeah. So so they're, they're kind of like on the same or maybe on the same apartment, I guess. <laughs> I'm not sure. If they, I'm not sure because I think they have totally separate locations. No, no, that was that was just a metaphor. Okay, okay. <laughs> but anyway, uh -huh. like, I, I know there's also like some sort of uh, it was a Godzilla hotel. I forgot. It was I think last year. Really? That was in Japan. Uh, was was it Godzilla nominated as a citizen of Japan? <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> Ambassador or something? How many fictional characters as citizens? It's, it's hard. <laughs> yeah, they also did the exact same thing with Wonder Woman when she was at the UN. Again, Wonder Woman is a fictional character. What well, weren't SJW mad at that because of the whole Wonder Woman being in, in the UN or something? Some I think they were. SJWs will find a stupid reason to be mad because at she was like sexualized or something. Yeah, <laughs> she was. She's oh, Wonder God. Woman. Save it from the hot chick. Uh, a lot of the reason why they're they're mostly bad just because they couldn't actually get the chance to represent themselves. <laughs> that's 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 most of the reason. <laughs> but of course, but I wouldn't be surprised if they do the exact same thing with the kaiju stuff. Like if they started to say, "Well, Godzilla is sexist and all this nonsense and buzzwords." It, it's well, going by the time Godzilla gets masculinity. popular. He is destroying us all. <laughs> it is toxic masculinity. <laughs> <laughs> By God, the time it gets popular, it will. Racism. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> I can't, I can't imagine anybody calling <laughs> the Godzilla franchise racist. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I'm sure that's that's. Uh, well, didn't you do a joke about that at some point? With 
Yeah, I did like, some sort of like BuzzFeed parody of Godzilla. Yeah. That actually was a funny uh -huh. one. I like that one. <laughs> but basically, like, um, I don't know, like, what could they possibly, you know, find that's actually problematic? Like, there's no way they could probably they find something. Long races, why not Godzilla? You know, it's just as silly. Oh, fuck. I forgot about that whole entire King Kong stuff until you mentioned it again. <laughs> like, holy shit. Like, I still can't believe, like, there was a video that was done by the Huffington Post. <laughs> where, <laughs> and, I, and I shit you not, they basically oh. compared black people to King Kong. <laughs> oh, I got it! I got it! I got it, Tyler! I got it! I know how you can, you can say Godzilla is racist. You go to the 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 all uh, the just the uh, the more recent um, all all monsters attack where you have the you have the, the big the big captain with the mustache and all that, and it, you can just edit it cleverly and talk about how the white man saved the Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> If you looked at it from the wrong angle, it would be the Japanese bad guy and the white man saving the Japanese. Oh, That's completely God. not what happens, but of course you could do that. I, like, I got a point, Tyler, because remember that, remember that time you grabbed a white woman and climbed the Empire State Building? That was crazy. When you did that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, I don't know what you were thinking there. <laughs> Oh, we're we're gonna see that. Oh yeah. Oh god. Oh yeah. Somebody yet? Somebody with way too much time on their hands needs to make needs to make that YouTube video. Oh fuck! <laughs> it probably have to be me. Probably. <laughs> we're, we're just gonna see. The, the next one is going to be at 2019, I think. Uh, it was in 2019. Oh no, no, no. Was that was I wrong? Yeah. Oh no, that was the other movie. Uh, and then 2020, they have Godzilla versus Kong. Yeah, uh, well, we can't, <laughs> we're just going to need to be prepared for the articles that they're going to make, and uh, I oh. don't know. <laughs> they could probably say that the American Godzilla is a product of cultural appropriation. <laughs> well, it's not to say that Godzilla's never been racist, but not in the way that we are used to thinking, because remember some of the, some of the like movies that involved the, uh, the Mothra and the yeah. island people were so comically primitive. Oh, <laughs> Oh I mean, fuck! There's some really racist shit going on there, but it's Japanese people people being racist to Polynesians. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. Like they actually had to put like the black face and everything to make. Oh yeah, it's really oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing funnier than a Japanese guy with black face on. <laughs> oh god, that that <laughs> that's going to blow some minds. <laughs> oh god. Oh, they, they, they got triggered with brown face. They got triggered with Asian characters putting brown face in their... Uh, <laughs> when they try to cosplay as Sombra from Overwatch. They got triggered by that. Of course, they're going to get triggered by that, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of funny it. because, like, when uh, Tropic Thunder just came... When they came out, I believe, in the mid-2000s, like, nobody was complaining about that blackface. Well, uh, maybe because that was in context, I think. I, 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 guess. I don't know. I don't know because I, I watched Tropic Thunder. It was it was all right, um, and I it was done in a context. It was done in some sort of context, and the character ended up ditching the blackface anyway and become an actual uh, Robert Downey Jr. returned to his like white form. Well, it's white <laughs> form. <laughs> wait 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 wait. Hold on a second. Suddenly I had this thought of Mom Ra going, "Grant me the form of ultimate evil." <laughs> Suddenly he's white. <laughs> <laughs> and I like the scene when the, he takes off his contacts and his brown eyes become blue. And that's funny because Robert Downey Jr. does not have blue eyes; he has brown eyes. <laughs> wow! <laughs> it was that. also a bit. It was also a bit surprising when like that Tom Cruise character was actually Tom Cruise. Like I didn't think it was actually yeah, him. I I didn't actually think it was him, but, uh, well, it was him. That movie is actually pretty fucking funny. <laughs> yeah. Does, I, I was, like, does this mean at some point we need to have the uh, the kaiju movie genre take a bit of the um, kind of the mystery man treatment? Where somebody takes it seriously. You know, someone who loves the genre makes fun of it. Hmm. And you have this, like... The giant rubber monster who's destroying the city, but it's because he's incredibly clumsy and stupid. <laughs> and everyone takes it completely seriously, though. You know what? There was actually plans where Trey Parker and Matt Stone, the creators of South Park, were going to make uh, 
a, a movie called Giant Monsters Attack Tokyo, which would use guys in rubber suits. All right, and they, <laughs> yeah, but they abandoned the movie. They never made it. Oh, dude, it would be oh. so awesome if they took it yeah, on. It, it, what a shame. That could have been an amazing parody. I mean, they, they did a fantastic job with, like, Team America, so I can't imagine what they could do with <laughs> Giant yeah, Monsters. One of fucking movies of all time, no doubt. Team America versus Kaiju would be fantastic. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, that would be like so hilarious to watch. Yeah, but it'd be funny. Great. America caused more damage than the monsters did. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, it's the revenge of North Korea. They they bring up that guy. What was it? What was the North Korean kaiju movie called? It was oh shit. It was there was a lot of them. There was like Dragon Wars. There was a uh, Youngery or something. Yeah, well, that was South Korean. That was South. That wasn't North Korean. Okay. I don't think uh, we have any uh, North Korean movies. Um. Really, yes, there was one. What the hell? What, uh, Pol Pol Polgasari Polgasari was the name of it. Let me link. Let me let me hold on. I'll I'll I'll, I'll send it to the side I chat. It would just be propaganda, propaganda like glorifying uh, the. Oh God, yes, it's, it is. It is horrible propaganda. Of course, it is. <laughs> Pretty much everything that comes out of North Korea is. Oh. Uh, oh, by the way, I I I want to I want to share this meme that I found, because. Um, uh, since we're talking about kaijus. <laughs> Hold on, I'm going to share it to everybody so they can see it. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see. Try uh, I love this scene. I just love this scene. <laughs> okay, going to press the green button. Application window. Share. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> that's. Just... <laughs> I, mean, I, just, I just, I do, I do love Ultraman. Although it's not, I don't. It's kind of the ka a kaiju thing. If if you take it in the same vein as maybe a, a power, uh, more so than a Power Ranger show, because you know the the hero becomes giant too. So. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I am a more of an Ultraman. I'm more of an Ultraman guy, so I am, uh, if in terms of my kaiju, I'm more of the Ultraman guy. Not well, really does, familiar with the Godzilla stuff. Isn't, like, Indonesia, like, you know, do they get, like, Ultraman directly from Japan? Or oh, yes. Yes, they do. Yes, we air Ultraman a lot every day. In fact, we are a lot of um, Japanese, uh, the Super Sentais, we air a lot of them, especially the ripoffs. Uh, do you know Greg Sazer? I think oh, I that. that was the shit. The Chosation series. I love those. I remember watching them on yeah, Grandcaesar.com way back in the day. Uh, Grand yeah, Caesar Grand Caesar kicked, Grand Caesar kicked ass. I loved it. Uh, but uh, yeah, you see, you see, you got Kamen Rider, all the stuff, uh, Power Rangers. But I am more of an Ultraman guy. Uh, I'm more of, I love the giant monsters or anything like that. But I'm more of the Showa era Ultraman, not the Heisen. Yeah, I said it was like in the uh, 50s or the 80s. I forgot which, but uh, it was it was great times. But it's mostly uh, kaiju's director for kids, and I I, I guess they did it uh, in terms of, like making a monster. Uh, they did it right with Ultraman because you actually get to have characters that you can relate to, people you can actually uh, you know not just the monsters or anything like that. It, yeah, uh, I guess the be I guess that's the benefit of just TV shows in general. It's like you can actually just flesh out your characters as much as possible to you know have them develop compared to like a movie. Mm. Yeah, yeah, a lot, lot of movies. Can be both a benefit or, or uh, that can be both a benefit or a curse because if you don't really have enough uh, enough skill to basically fill out the runtime, it can just yeah. have the characters doing this, talking about the same shit over and over again, or inventing yeah. subplots that go nowhere just to pad out the length. That is one of the things I kind of liked about um, some of the, like, you know, well, shaky cam aside that I kind of liked about uh, um, Cloverfield was it because it, it took the, the one of the aspects that usually works for giant river monster movies is you film the people as though they're in a disaster movie. You film the monsters as though they're in a wrestling match. Ah, uh, there's a little disconnect in that in some in a lot of in some ways there's a little disconnect in that. Yeah. Like, are, are we supposed to like? Go ahead. Are, are we supposed to like enjoy the view because uh, it's the monsters destroying everything like that? Are we supposed to like enjoy the view or are we supposed to like sympathize with the characters because they're in despair? Because uh, that little sort yeah. of disconnect kind yeah, that's of. Why, that's, that's why it's so difficult for them to get it get it right. I think. It's, well, it's I think yeah. 14, um, 
Godzilla movie really handled that well. That's why I really like the movie. I like that the end scene with the soldiers going through the bu battle. I like that it's filmed mostly from the human perspective because it really emphasizes the creature's size when you like are just kind of looking up at them battling over overhead. Mm -hmm. it, it, yeah, it, yeah, it was an ant in the middle of a grudge match. It was a little too dark, though. That, that's that's a lot of my criticism. The 2014. It's a little too dark. Uh, yeah, well, a lot of times they. Oh yeah, did it just dark? It was like literally dark. Yeah, literally dark. <laughs> <laughs> literally dark. Uh, I just want to see like uh, uh when when, there, when when Godzilla like in the end in the 2014 movie where he was like it was bright as day and he came out and was it it looks beautiful. It looks gorgeous. Like, but they just decided to film everything at night. Then um, I realized that the director also directed Monster. Yeah. I was like, okay, yeah, uh, that was his thing. Okay. What did you guys but, think of Rogue One? That Star Wars Rogue One, because he also directed that one. It no, was, which, which, it was which, okay. It's not bad. It was okay. It's not. Well, it's not the greatest thing ever. Rogue One was the best Star Wars movie since the, since the Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. I thought it was good. Yeah, the final scenes where you have the 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 ad ads coming at the at the characters felt a little like a kaiju movie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, the really the way it was filmed was this and this earth shaking. They're just looming over, just looking at the heroes. Are like, yeah, okay, I get that. They're fucked. They brought, they brought back uh, what was Peter Cushing from the dead using computer animation. Yeah, that was a mistake. They could have. That was a mistake. Out. That was a mistake. Why, well, Jesus? Back. But it, like it, it, they could have had any other character in there. It didn't. It didn't look good. I would have preferred that they recast him. Uh, yeah, it's it's a character, not it's not Peter Cushing. It's a character. They could they could have done a they they would have had an oppor they had an opportunity to recast, get a good older actor to do him. I mean, uh, strike me with this one here. Uh, wouldn't it have been interesting to see Ian McKellen as yep Grandma Tarkin? Tarkin? Yes, he could pull that. He could pull that shit off, and he's and, and that would have looked and felt better than the CG Grand Moff Tarkin. I don't know. I mean, Peter Cushing kind of just feels so iconic in that part, and really having someone else's face there really wouldn't have worked. It really, kind of that you had to have Peter Cushing's face back, and and it was probably know. the most realistic digital human I've ever seen in a movie. Oh yeah, <laughs> and also the one in the one of the Fast and Furious movies had like the lead actor had a CGI face when he died. That looks yeah. pretty convincing too. Yeah, that's because his brother played it. So it'll be they'll be able to do computer animation realistic enough that you probably won't be even be able to tell in like maybe maybe another that, 15 years. In the case of Fast and Furious Seven, that's because Paul Walker's brother played him. That that's why it looks convincing because there's not a lot of changes need to be made because his brother actually looks a lot like him too. So. By the way, has anyone seen Gorgo, the that British kaiju movie? Oh yeah, I, I saw that one. No. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's it's kind of silly. It, it, the, the 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 problem with the suit is that the head that has these fins, but they aren't reinforced in any way, so they flap constantly. <laughs> so it's weird that you flap all the time. It's very silly. What do you guys think about Super Sentai and Power Rangers? Um, I'm a avid fan of Super Sentai since 2003, 2004. And as for as for Power Rangers. I used to, I used to love it a lot as a kid. Nowadays, not so much. It's kind of funny because I was introduced to Super Sentai and Kaiju through Power Rangers, and like it was much later on when Shout Factory started to release the Super Sentai stuff that I started to see the originals. I am more familiar with the Power Rangers stuff, but uh, also the newer Power Rangers. But uh, the best, the better ones in the Power Rangers uh, are the 2000 and 2000 Air series. The 2010 forward, they're not that excellent, with the exception of uh, what was it called? Uh, Power Rangers Primal Fury. Well, I forgot what was it. I lost uh, count of the, the whole entire series for the titles. So it's just so many yeah, titles. I, yeah, I lost count as well. Um, I do love remember. I do remember liking SPD and uh, what's the other. Uh, like Speed Rescue. I remember liking those, but uh, the rest I just don't really. Eh. I mean, I, the only one I could really care about is just the original Power Ranger. That's ah, the original. We were little kids when that came out. You know, I was. Like, yeah. I I love the the original Saban era of Power Rangers, like Mighty Morphin, Zio, in Space. Power Rangers. Those were awesome. <laughs> now, as for like the Disney era, like Wild Force, Ninja Storm, the, that era, I wasn't a too fan. I saw the new the new movie, the re the the reboot, 
which was a little more serious. Uh, it was okay. Yeah, the reboot. I was actually shocked that the reboot was not that terrible. It's it's okay. No, I still need to see the bad. reboot. It's, it's not that terrible. It's it's a it's okay. It's it's serviceable. It's it's kind of like it's also kind of like my opinion on Ghost in the Shell. Basically, it's okay. It's all right. It's not not the great. Not, not great. It felt like one episode, but it's yeah, okay. Yeah, the same way it was very okay. I don't I don't get why people say like uh, Ghost in the Shell is like a product of whitewashing when clearly <laughs> in the fucking original movie, like it's quite obvious like the main character is like a fucking cyborg and so is capable to be like, you know, in any kind of body besides, you know, that one cyborg in the movie. So my social justice warriors like complaining about your shit. Yeah, I uh, also uh, here's also an argument sorry. that I find very funny. Um uh, they basically argue. One of, some people basically argue that Scarlett Johansson is a bad actress, and her acting is basically robotic. But then I say, she's playing a robot. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I resent that, but no. <laughs> but but in all seriousness, I my thought my thought of the whole Scarlett Johansson thing was was, I mean, you know, if they're gonna complain about culture, uh, you know, cultural theft or whitewashing, I'm like, well, William Gibson wants his fucking cyberpunk back then. You know, but white people yeah. invented the entire fucking genre. It's fine. We don't. Nobody cares. No. Exactly. And the thing about it is that Japanese studios also remade some American stuff as well. Like there was this one movie I remember. It was like a remake of Unforgiven that was made by a Japanese studio. Yeah. And naturally, it was full of Japanese people, which nobody cares. Yeah. Which is yeah, it's 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 really it's really weird in, in that respect. Um, also, uh, not Japanese but Chinese. Um, the Departed, uh, Infernal Affairs. Those are those are great movies, uh, both of them. And the Infernal Affairs was Chinese, and obviously when they try to take it into America, they're gonna have Americans. Yeah, it's kind of funny. When I was watching The Departed years ago, I didn't think it was actually a remake. <laughs> it was so good oh. to say. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I actually thought it was a remake because uh, I watched it for all affairs first, and uh, then then I realized uh, then I watched it in part. I was like, "Have I have I have I heard this plot before?" I was like, "Check it out! Oh yeah, it was a remake for Infernal affairs." Like, oh god, yeah, damn it. And, you know, and, and what uh, Magnificent Seven, Seven Samurai, is, you know. <laughs> oh really? I did notice that. <laughs> yeah, and there, there's and then that and the, and the Seven Samurai is is uh, off of something else uh, before that, and it's like it's it's fine. You know that's actually the fun part, and and I guarantee you, if they decided to make, uh, you know, the Japanese decided to remake Star Wars, there there'd hardly be a white person in that movie. <laughs> you know, right. and that's fun. None of us would care. Attack yeah, it was it was also like another movie I, I remember. It was like that movie that was directed by Kurosawa. It was called Your Jimbo. That was remade as an American movie, which was like a fistful of dollar from Clint Eastwood. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, but it was, that was made in Spain. An example because it was a major plot point in the anime that um, the, the the one woman, uh, Miss, what's her, Mishiku or something, was one, was like the last Asian woman on the planet because the Titans had devastated Asian countries and everyone else was Caucasian white, and but in the live action adaptation, everyone's Asian. <laughs> it's funny you yeah. mentioned. It's funny you mentioned Titans. What do you guys think about Attack on the Titans? Attack on Titan, I didn't like it. I didn't I, like I, it. I would have watched Attack on Titan if those had been kaiju and not giant naked people. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Attack Attack on Titan, I, I just don't really like it. It has the typical shonen anime problem. You know, the overlong characters, the characters were whiny, and the plot is padding, just to pad everything. Uh, and season two... Dark. That is one of the See, darkest shows ever. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. It is. I wouldn't call it the <laughs> darkest in the anime, but I would say it is pretty dark, at least for a mainstream one. Um, but the second season does take an interesting approach to the entire thing. It is only 12 episodes in the second season, but it does take a more horror approach. And I, in a I lot of ways, the second season, and I've only seen the first season. Yeah, like, same here. Like, I thought the first season was already horror enough because the yeah, idea of, the idea of you getting eaten by these giant things is already scary enough to imagine. Yeah. yeah. One, 
One scene that really shocked me is this one where the Titans are at this guy's window and he loads a shotgun and his wife's like, what, what is that going to do? And he just and he blows his own head off with it. I'm like, oh. Wow. Yeah. 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 And that, yeah, was, it's, that was the other thing that I felt was really, you know, there's this contrived thing where these giant monsters can only be you're really hurt with with Ed's weapons, so they have to do this hand to hand thing. I'm like, okay. It was like you, know, you had to, basically had to use the giant sword things to go to the monsters to kill them. Yeah, it would make more sense if these if these things were big scaly monsters that were too armored for that, and you had to hit them in the weak points. You know, their aim wasn't good enough to do it any other way. But Jesus, I I still find it confusing though that. Uh, cause the way the tight, the way the, I forgot the other thing, I forgot the name of the group, but basically the way how they maneuver to each other, like the Titans would, how fast are the Titans? The Titans are pretty freaking slow. How the hell can they are not able like to catch them and everything like that? They just go to people's backs, just cut their well, back and their necks off. It doesn't, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Yeah, yeah like, I, I, I would think like, if they were to see like the, the people just coming towards them, they would probably just grab them <laughs> if they're just so slow. And then it'd be munch, munch, chew, 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 munch, munch, munch. munch. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Holy oh. shit, we've been going on for almost two hours now, but I'm going to end the stream <laughs> right here. But uh, thanks right. you guys for coming on, and I appreciate it. If you guys want to talk to me after the stream, you're free to do so. And thanks to everybody right. else for watching the stream. I know it's disoriented and stuff, but what the hell? But take care of you guys. Sorry I was late. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>